Good morning everyone and welcome to Futurescape Virtual and today we're with Mark Rudy and Matt from Landform Consultants. We're sitting in a fantastic environment where a lot of the stuff you can see around here is from Chelsea's previous Chelsea shows and we've got a nice fire being burnt, got nice cups of tea in the Landform mugs but the real idea is to find out exactly how Landform continues to be successful over the years and find, find out a little bit more about Landform as a business, what's the plans going forward, how you are so consistent, why you are so consistent and how the company is shaped. So I'll just start with you Mark if possible, just give us an outline, a bit of history about Landform, when it started, how it started. Uh, <coughs> well, it's been a bit of a journey. Landform started in 2003 uh, after the demise of Landmark which was my original company which was set up in 88 and we had some serious bad debt and I, I guess we're on a, a, a crossroads at that time. So we basically packed a life raft and um, put the business into voluntary liquidation which was a massively painful, very public uh, failing of that company. But you know, I guess running businesses is, is tough. Uh, learned some valuable lessons, but we packed all the, the right people and we went forward in 2003. So we hit the ground running. Matt, obviously, we worked together for 30, 33 years. 33 years, like a old married couple we are. Uh, and, and then what, what came out of that was a lot purer, um, a, a, lot more, um, a lot more diligent uh, in the way that we ran the business lessons learned and you're always learning lessons it's, it's a tough business yeah. uh, uh, what we do so but that's it so we, we've kind of never really looked back since since the inception of, of landform yeah. and in 2003 then so were you based here no no we weren't we were based uh, at silverland stone right. which was our old uh, depot and yard and uh, obviously it was it was Hello Times, I mean, we, Land, Landmark was a fantastic, it won the Grand Award twice, yeah. it was a, a pedigree business and we were very proud of what we achieved and all of a sudden it, 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 it ended and uh, you know, it was just a bit like a, an atomic bomb going off uh, and you know, the phone didn't ring with trade bodies, uh, shows and, and all the committees you served on, it was just pure and, and then I, I think in those early days of Landform we built some of the best work. Right. Absolutely the best work and the, the first picture, uh, the, the job, a Luciano job, is hung on our boardroom table uh, above our, our boardroom and that kind of reminds me of that journey because that, that garden still is one of the iconic pieces of work like delivered to perfection and there was nothing else, no, no distraction from doing business. How, how did you get the confidence back in the market to, to build gardens like that straight away? You know, I mean, that, that's what we do, uh, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm possibly, I'm a very, very good landscape, is the business as sharp as it should be? I think it is now, yeah. but obviously you're learning and I think there's lots of people that look to, to me and my journey is that they're a great landscape, but how do you become a great business person? How do you run business and be profitable and margins and things like that? And I think now what we do at Landform is we do that. We yeah, focus yeah. a lot more on profitability. Um, back in the day, you know, somebody said, well, you, I bet you can't build that. Yes, we can. And we build it, <laughs> irrespective of we made any money. But it's, it was a challenge just to do things. And I think we've never walked away from, um, we've never not delivered a, a quality, top quality project. But now we deliver quality projects, but profitability and all the, biz all the business side that goes with that. And do you think you're in a position where you can choose the profitable jobs? Yeah, I think, you know, getting, getting older, so I'm kind of 60 now, and it, yeah, I'm a lot more, I analyse risk, yeah. I risk, look at risk, so my, my job uh, as part of the, the, this, this team is to kind of look at the, the jobs, yeah. so Rudy basically prices it, Matt runs it, I look at the front end and look at, is it right for us, are the risks high, you know, where, where the, where's the pitfalls? And I think that's that's what I that's what I'm good at. I think actually looking at logistic size, and we'll we'll walk away. We walk away quite nicely, yeah. politely, uh, correctly. But we can't do everything. And and I think actually in the early days, possibly we did. You know, you just become a busy fool, yeah, yeah, and you're yeah. just trying to please everybody where you shouldn't. You should walk away. So you're you're obviously extremely well known and the face of it. I guess Matt and Rudy less less so. We don't. <laughs> Matt's still around quite often, but really. 
tends to be more office bound or this is, yeah, this is the dream team yeah. right here <laughs> the dream team <laughs> Matt, what, what, what's your day to day role then um, I generally um, uh, run around all the sites, yeah. so I look after all the all the projects on the ground as they're running. Yeah. Um, uh, so the day to day, um, nuts and bolts really. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I do client liaison, meeting um, designers, um, and uh, I make sure the schemes run smoothly yeah. um, and um, on time, yeah. within and budget. Mark said, "Really, you, you do the pricing, so is that?" Yes, I'm um, the main. The main. Role. I'm, I'm sort of the money man almost. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do the. Um, up, uh, my my first first role is estimating, is yeah. to, to get the prices back, um, to make sure we win something and that will be profitable down yeah, the line. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then beyond that, I also look after the quantity surveying and the and the accounts and make, to make sure that what we build is roughly what we yeah. priced. It's quite quite interesting <laughs> that because a lot of people say that they do the estimating, hmm. and very rarely do they go back and check against. How that came out was it profitable? Was was the cost there? Do you do you go into that kind of depth now? Would you? Uh, we do, and we're constantly working um, towards um, uh, improving that. Yeah. Um, I mean, a few years ago, it was an estimate in Excel, and there was a bit of accounts, and we tried to marry it up. Uh, and now we are investing in more um, uh, software and more technology that makes that process more more slick for us, yeah. um, so that the estimate can go into the account and automatically yeah. um, do all this work for us. Um, but yes, now we're working towards yeah. improving all that. I wonder if your experience, Mark, you look at jobs, you know roughly what it's going to cost. Yeah. yeah, we do, actually, but now this is its really, really pure what we do, yeah. and I think our roles are really defined. So I'm good at looking at the risk and seeing things. So I'm the eyes for Rudy. Yeah. So the inquiry comes in, Rudy does all the, I think he's underselling stuff, he's commercial director. Right. So he's not just the estimate, he's putting all the software in, yeah. all the systems that we're, mm -hmm. that we're working to. And you know, he's, he's obviously office based. I'm kind of out on, on the ground. Yeah. So I hand it over to Rudy. I take all the photographs that goes on the system. Then I, I talk him through the scheme. We will look at the job. Then Rudy prices it, and then we adjudicate it together, and, and we look at the numbers, we look mm. at our competition, um, we look at the risks, we look at how badly we need the job, and then once it's won, then Rudy then brings in Matt, mm. and then it's all handed over, uh, and then it's tracked. But Rudy's estimating software is very complex, and yeah. it ties up with all our costings uh, in the office. So, you know, on, on a day by day, we've got our finger on the pulse. We yeah. literally have. And if you're out on your estimating, what, what, what is it timing, is it labour costs, is it product costs, what, where, where's the fluctuations mainly? <laughs> well, <laughs> weather's a big, big thing. So yeah. Weather last year yeah. it killed yeah. our figures. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I think labour is also a big one to get right. Yeah. Um, how long does it take? Yeah. <laughs> as, as, you know, you um, made an interesting point about the, you know, this kind of consistently, this quality. The, yeah. the higher the quality, it's yeah. harder for Rudy to get the outputs right. Yeah. When the quality's got to be so exact yeah. here. You know, are the lads doing five metres a day? Are they doing ten metres a day? The lower the quality, it's easy to to actually program where you are, mm. and that's prob probably you know looking at that, looking at that. Yeah. And we've got very very our projects varies quite a lot. A bit of commercial, high end domestic, smaller yeah. projects. They're all different build speeds, so you yeah. have to kind of. Uh, that, that's um, tricky to get right, but yeah, no. It's but it really it works really well. As far as I'm concerned, like Rudy's too valuable to be just drifting around on 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 jobs that are, are not going to go anywhere. Mm. So I'll kind of pre-qualify what we what we're looking at uh, with Rudy. Yeah. Matt's Matt's too busy because he's running well, at the moment. We've got. Eight, 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 nine jobs live. Is that average as well? Or is that yeah, it tends to it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the biggest is Wisley, which is, yeah. you know, multi million. Easy, and, and then we've obviously got, that's probably the smallest one's about 60,000. Right. But everything in between. And so, but Matt, Matt, Matt's very religious how he runs the site. So yeah. we have formal meetings, we have um, dedicated formal for each job with their own iPads and email accounts. And Matt does audited. M m yeah, weekly meetings. So just just a couple of things on that. One, I'm going to come back to the consistency. But w what what is an ideal type of job for long landform? How much is it worth the value of it? Where's where, where do you sort of make the most profit on? Because I guess the the bigger the job, hmm. uh, maybe not so much the profit. The smaller, you, maybe you, you 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 don't win them because you, you your profit margin. Where where's the sort of an ideal type well, of job? I suppose I, I suppose really. Um, yeah, I, I think we're we're we, we just seem to make better margins with the larger projects. Right, yeah. um, 
um, are, are, we've got a, a slightly heavier um, overheads now. Our office is 14 people now, office right. staff. Yeah. Um, uh, so the smaller projects is really difficult for us to um, to win and make make the margins because this we our comp competition is um, is working off lower margins, lower yeah. overheads, and all that. So it's the it's the larger projects that we, helps yeah. us. We 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 we're, we're we're not. I mean, we're in a dangerous side because we're not small yeah. and we're certainly not large, but yeah. we're in that kind of really dangerous ground. Yeah that we have to have to take on the overhead, so things like full-time health and safety, quality manager, full-time HR person, that small companies don't have, they outsource. So we've had to kind of all those growing pains. And when you look at the overhead, you know, we can't do profitable small, small works. Yeah, yeah. And people think, oh yeah, they're expensive. I don't think we are, actually. Um, I think we're very um, value for money in our sector. Yeah. So up against our competition, we, we know um, because we actually get the feedback, and as I said, Rudy, it's an art form. I think the estimating is the art form yeah, yeah. Um, to get that right, and then obviously Matt then has to, to deliver it. But we've got we've got all the data. We've got the data, but you can't compensate for appalling weather. So, so just just looking at it, so like, as as an industry, how good is the landscape companies are estimating? I think very, very varied. Uh, I think it's very, it's very hard because a lot of small people uh, are very good artisans, very good craftspeople. But as I said, I'm, I'm, I was one of them. Not great at business and inconsistent on various. And not everybody is a. I mean, he's our striker, <laughs> and not everybody has that that professional estimator. Yeah. Which you know, and we see that we we when we when we go in against our competition, pretty consistent. I mean. Yeah. It, 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 it's scary how many times we come back and we're on a £200,000 job, there's 300 quid in it. Yeah. It's just unbelievable, yeah. actually. Um, but I, I do think uh, one, of our, one of the threats to our industry is, is ourselves, really. Yeah. I think people panic, people under budget, they, they, you know, they, they shaft the market, they, they want to buy because they're panicking. Yeah. And it's just all we do is, and, and we're not, we're in a fortunate position that we don't have to do that. Yeah. And, you know, it, we have to make money. And, and I think actually, you know, I'm quite happy to talk about it because I could write the book yeah. about, about stuff. And I've lost yeah. money, but I've never walked <coughs> away and said, oh, that'll do. We, it's all about the money. Yeah, yeah. It, it's always got to be about the quality and the profit right underneath it. And I guess looking at the quality, that, that comes into you then. It does, yeah, very much so, yeah. How, yeah. how do you get... Because Apple got a fantastic reputation, and we, we talked to a lot of designers and people. Like the landscape is looking up to you. All designers would, would choose to work with you if they had the right budgets. Um, how do you make sure that that consistency and the quality of work goes through every single job? I think it's educating the teams and educating um, the foreman. We've got some really good foreman on on, you know, on, on our side, and it's um, it's passed down the line. It's, it works really well. Yeah, I think a lot of hard work. Yeah, a lot of a lot of moving parts doggedly doggedly getting hold of it and not letting go of it yeah. and, and making sure you know whatever's thrown at us we, we deal with it don't just stick your head in the sand and it, it's good enough and when I, I don't know that happen if something's not quite not quite there yeah. come on boys we need to have a look at this I know. think show gardens helps us well as yeah. well I mean sh the quality you need for show gardens that filters yeah. through to yeah. the projects yeah. yeah I mean that that's to, for me that's the perfect contract You've got a, a 18 days to build something pretty spectacular. <laughs> you don't get no second chance at it. And for for the business, it's just a, it's a really good way of conditioning the business to to, to deliver that. Yeah. You know. So, so most of your team have the opportunity to work on Chevrolet yeah. to get that yeah. grain in there. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. But they're not forced to work it. Yeah. So, I mean, Ch Chelsea, particularly Chelsea, knocks knocks the stuffing out of the guys. Yeah. And some guys say, look, boss, you know, just we need a year out. It's fine. No problem, and we're big enough now that we can move things around. But it's a great, it's a great tool yeah. to entice, entice people into our company because most most of the landscapers want to stab at it, you yeah, know, yeah. want want to want to do it, and uh, most of them do. And we we do smaller projects at Chelsea, and maybe trial a younger foreman, yeah, a younger crews out. Yeah. And uh, I, I I do believe it's it's it's, it's good <coughs> discipline. It, it's, it can it can alter the, the way the business is run because it's a complete focus. Yeah. But on the positive side, you know everybody's is driving to a goal and that quality, and and you're benchmarking yourself every every single year. Yeah. I think it's on the supply chain as well. So the, the suppliers we use, they need to know the quality which we 
expect. Yeah, expect. Yeah. So yeah. No, you know, plant nurseries to yeah. stone it, suppliers. It, it's not a happy accident. Yeah. It is not a happy accident yeah. that the quality is there. Yeah. It has to be worked out. And, and, and you know, we are, I think, I, I'm certainly driven. Well, all these guys are driven. We're, we're all very, very driven. And, you know, we just want absolutely right. Yeah. So it, I, I think that's, that's just in the DNA of, of what we do. Um, so going into 14 office space staff, how, how many other staff and what's the structure that you, you've got then? How many? Um, well, 66 in the company. Right. Um, 14 in the office, about 30 uh, for consultants, building gardens, and about 20 in maintenance at the minute. Right. And then I think we have a, a yard manager and um, a driver that okay. visits the oh, sites. The sites. Um, yeah. So that's the numbers, more yeah, or yeah, less. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and in terms of the difference in, in the build and the maintenance, and as, as a percentage of the business turnover, mm. then, is, it, is the maintenance quite a small part? Or? No, I mean, well, the maintenance is, I mean, obviously it started because I, I do believe that you can't build a, 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 these, these quality jobs and just walk away from it. Yeah. Actually, I think there's a responsibility for getting defects liability um, to, to own that project. And, and that's where the maintenance started from. We're doing, we're small on maintenance, we're doing a million on maintenance. Right, okay. Yeah. And obviously, um, and is that mainly on your own gardens? You don't do any maintenance. On no, no, we no, we absolutely no. We we look after when you say our own gardens, the things gardens, that we built. Gardens you've yes, built. principally, yeah. and and some commercial work. Right. And uh, interesting, we we're doing one of frosts. So right. we look after one of frost roof gardens up in London. So um, no, we we, we we tender for some of our maintenance yeah, projects. We, we, yeah, we yeah. do. Yeah. And, and and again, same type of criteria, same standards, same. Mm. Look at the cost into making sure you make your money, all yeah. the same yeah. principles yeah. with yeah. the maintenance side of it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and recruiting staff, because maintenance staff is slightly different than the construction yes. staff. Mm. Um, how, how, how's that? Right? <laughs> oh, uh, I'm, I'm just laughing because I know the maintenance manager is constantly looking for staff. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's harder. It is yeah, hard. It's hard. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I think it's easy to get construction yeah. for us because we've got a, this reputation and yeah. and you know kind of mar route to market through things like Chelsea, so people are drawn to us. Yeah. Um, yeah finding good horticulture is a yeah. you know, yes. really an issue. Yeah. I think there's a big shortage of that yeah. Yeah. in the industry. Full stop. And what, what other sort of key roles are there other than you three in the business? Well, we've got, we've got Scott, maintenance manager. Yeah. Uh, Matt's got a manager, a contract manager under well him. Yeah. Uh, we've got a full-time health and safety and quality manager. Yeah. And that's been, that's been two years now? Two years now, yeah. Two years. And that's, that's been really, really good. Yeah. Because we have to up our game. And, you know, and, and I think any business, no matter what size, you have to keep up in your game. So, um, you know, it's, we see that some of this quality stuff will be by accreditation yeah. and you'll only be invited to tender if you've got all the accreditation. Yeah. And so things like the kind of quality systems that we have in place. Um, so that's, that's, I would say, a key, a, a key change for us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Finance manager yeah. and that. So we've got um, a finance manager in-house yeah. that really, really manages our money incredibly well. She's incredibly driven. Yeah. Uh, then we have a visiting accountant. Uh, so she's remotely looking at our business and, and visiting. And then we have a strategic accountant. Right. Uh, that basically, many, for a long, long time ago, we had a, a chap called Les Mitchell, uh, who was, who, he basically helped put Sage in the company 20 odd years ago. Right. And he became a mentor, a mentor to me. And he was a grey suit, very, very, very straight down the line. And, and, and guided us through and, and told me, taught me, or tried to teach me how to do business yeah. properly. Yeah. And, and, and Matt, and, and he was just a lovely guy. Sadly, we lost him three years ago. Yeah, three years ago now, yeah. And uh, that left a massive hole. And I realized we <coughs> needed somebody, not just a kind of bean counter, not accountant, but somebody to help like the board yeah. to, de to decide. And one of your questions was, how do we decide what to do? Yeah. You know, I still think that we're a small, we're like a rib, we're a small speedboat and we can change direction, we're not a super tanker, yeah. we can make decisions between us and where we're going to go. But I think actually having um, this st strategic accountant who basically answers to the board just about shares and dividends and strategy. Who, who sits on the board then, who is the board? 
this is it, this right. is it, this is the dream team here, <laughs> right here, uh, and with a strategic accountant. Yeah. Um, and then obviously we have the finance, the design team, Catherine MacDonald yeah. heads up our design side, yeah. mm. and she's doing incredibly well. Yeah. Um, and her design projects within our business are becoming bigger and bigger. So, so what, what's the sort of balance in you, you're building your own projects you're designing compared to... Still, still we rely on probably 70% yeah. external design. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, th that's never been a threat to those designers. They don't see Catherine as a threat. Yeah. Um, the fact that we've got design capability, proper design capability, that we can print off drawings, we can open files. I think a construction company of our like has to have that uh, capability yeah. to understand the language of design. Yeah. So having a design, um, so we'll, we'll work up all the details of some of these jobs. So it, it's a really, really, it complements our business. Yeah, yeah. And, and I guess it, difficult with strong personalities and characters. How, how much autonomy do the rest of the team have in making decisions and making sure that, you know, if, I don't know, if they know Matt's coming on site, that they do something, Matt's coming away, how much do they feel that ownership of what they're doing? I like you answer. That. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, yeah, I think they um, we, we employ some really good foreman, so yeah. I think they um, that they can make their own decisions and. and uh, I mean, they've all got credit cards, yeah. so the foreman have got credit yeah. cards with limits, yeah. so they have autonomy. They they run, but we try to to have a, a, a proper managed system, yeah. so mm -hmm. you know it's, it's controlled, so we know where we're buying from, and they're not just going off and cutting deals at, at, at the wrong rates. Yeah. They do all the aggregate buying and stuff like that, but yeah. we would do, in, in the office, we would do all the buying. The bulk purchases. So yeah. where, bulk who, purchases. who would do that? Who negotiates the big deals with suppliers? And we have a, we have a um, buyer in the office, right. which, and that, that's our role is to look after all that. Yeah. Yeah. And, Matt, and Matt will. So yeah. Matt, is, well, if, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Matt will take that and say, leave to me, I, I'm going yeah. to sit on this, because there's yeah. money there that I need to, to deal how, with. How strong are you? If I was selling to you, are you, you know, Tough negotiation, you know. You uh, I'd like to think so. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite important, though, isn't it? Well, yeah, it is. No, it's very important. It's very important. I, 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 you know, to I get think the right price. Get, and both ways as well. Yeah, from the yeah. Point of view. To be fair, yeah. To be fair, both ways. Yeah. I think also we we, we have there's, there's a saying that that we often say money's made or lost in the office. Yeah. Mm. So if we don't cut the right deals, price it right, yeah. see all the pitfalls and, and do it right, the lads genuinely won't lose money. They'll yeah. lose money because it's rain or or potentially, yes, we make mistakes. Things go wrong on, on sites. We're not, it's not perfect here. Yeah. We're not unrealistic, but we try our best to make sure we don't, you know, we don't want somebody snagging our work when yeah. we should be snagging ourselves. So we try to go for like zero snagging if we can. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it's not always possible, but you know, me and Matt just kind of, we, we've kind of bruised our knees for, for decades. Yeah. So he thinks like I think, yeah. and you know, I think like he thinks. Yeah, yeah. And, and quite honestly, I have to say, in 30 odd years, I don't think we've ever rowed. No. We've no. never fallen out. Not we're like, bitch. Not, not, not like husband and wife. Yeah, well, we're bitch, <laughs> like yeah. husband and wife, but we've never, we've never thrown out, and we've never thrown our toys. And I think we've got a, a lot of respect, and the same with yeah. Rudy. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, when, Rudy's did seven years. Rudy? when did you join Rudy? When did you go? Seven years ago. Seven years, seven years ago. ago. Mm. And, and what made you come to Landfall? <laughs> uh, change, <Money>. I think. <laughs> yes. I, I might change. I, let me answer that for you. I, I think Rudy loves to have all these different projects going on yeah, yeah. because we don't just do one project. One minute we're we're building a, a, a garden in the bloody London iPod. Next minute we're doing a we're turfing Savile Row. Next yeah. minute we're doing a very complex hard landscape package, a drainage package, yeah. and you know, it's very very varied what we do. Yeah, and you, you know. And I think I've got more autonomy as well. Yeah. Um, some of the bigger companies, um, you work in a, in a rigid structure. Yeah, and we, yeah. We've got a bit more autonomy to, to steer things the way we yeah. think. It, um, it works, re it works it's, really, it's really well. Um, and you talked about money and yeah. salary, which yeah. I guess is important. Do you benchmark what you pay your people against what competitors do? Um, no, I don't think I do. But I know that historically, remember Tony Winder, bless him, Sadly, past Tony Wine and Pantiles, he pulled me in his office one day a long time ago and said, The trouble is with you, Ma, you pay too much, you've ruined it for people like us. And I, I, I don't really agree with that. I think, I think all our people need to be paid the right, the right salaries. Yeah. I mean, we, we've got me market competitive, but I don't think, um, I think we, I think we pay 
you know, what we can afford to pay within the market sector. Just going back to the estimate, just, just on, yeah. on cap. Do you, know that you, do you know you're going to be more expensive than most of the other competitors? No, not that. Not that. I'm, no. I mean, 80% of what we do, we have to tender for. Um, yeah. it's surely it's a little bit of a landfall that allows you to be 10% more than <laughs> something. Well, no, because, because of the reputation. Have, and 90, most, most clients want the cheapest off the people. The, the main thing is to get the right people on the tender list. Yeah. Uh, people that is similar to us um, and not to be competing with um, a, a B or a C um, grade company. Yeah. Um, you want to be competing with similar Similar but size, similar uh, quality companies, and then you know you're on, on even grounds. Yeah. And then, and then but Jim, it's, Jim, it's an art form, and yeah. I, I, seriously, I, I think it's the most important part of the company is yeah. to get that right. Yeah. And and often we we will win work on the detail that Rudy puts in. I mean, it's just it is staggering the the, and that gives the confidence. So it's not necessarily on price. Yeah. And I know that if we are really keen on a job, we can just literally fine tune it. And it is that accurate yeah. that we can know. And we know, and, and also we have to find out our competitors and we have the feedback. Yeah. So we know whatever, who, how, how they're pricing. And we know if we need to win a job for whatever reason, for marketing, yeah. you know, I can say to Rudy, we need to get this job. And fine tune it and in. But it's backed up. It's the backup that goes with the tender. It's not just the the numbers. And I, I, I guess that's what I was getting to there. The people must know the support and the backup and, and what you bring to the project. So I, I guess as long as the price is too dissimilar to everybody else, is there's Landform have that advantage? That I think we've got the track record and we've got the stuff to back it up, but sometimes the, the downside, we've got to be careful who we price because Rudy will spend, it's the biggest drain of our money, yeah. is, is what Rudy does. Is, is this tendering yeah. and they'll get out they'll get the landform tenders who oh, this is fantastic it's all build up for us and it's a lot of work yeah. and you know scrupulous clients will say well that's it take the, the price off that's what you price yeah, yeah. so we're not we're not a free pricing service yeah, yeah. the so designer can recommend uh, you know a good contractor but at the end of the day it's the client who makes that choice mm -hmm. yeah but, but it's giving it's giving the client that confidence yeah. and i know that if we package the thing up with with all the supporting documents yeah. the quality plan the program, all that stuff, we'll, we'll, we'll give anybody a run for the money. And because and how, how much detail do you need from the designer? Well, I mean that's <laughs> that's that's the kind of thing. So some some designers will give us incredible chapter and verse. Yeah. Some designers won't. They'll yeah. give us a very scant thing. Yeah. The problem is with designers, if if they give us scant information, they won't get the clarity that Rudy can give. So yeah. if there's not the information, you end up putting provisional sums and it's all a bit loose and a bit, mm. if it's tight, then he'll price bang on. Yeah, yeah. And you know, and, and the more information we get, the better job we can. It, dry, it dries us crazy a little bit, yeah. just because you're trying to deliver something, quality, with kind of one arm time behind your back. So how different is it when you're pricing up your own designs? We have some fun and games with it, for sure. I mean, Catherine is incredibly, you know, she's from a science background and she's very diligent, but obviously she'll kind of hijack Rudy. And not, not any of a designer would do that. So I, I hear these, these long conversations where she's going through every line and Steam's coming out of his ears because he's got a million things to do. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think, it, it, I think, I think one of the most important thing is, is, is the quality that the design is in. And what our job is to define what what quality we're, we're aiming to do. Yeah, yeah. Um, so would you build a, a garden at a lesser price and a lesser quality? No. Mm -hmm. So you'd yeah. rather not do the garden? Yeah. Yeah. Walk away. Walk away any day. We might, we might do a lesser price. We might do a lesser price for a market quality, opportunity. Quality would be, so, but quality, quality would never. Be. And never. And how much emphasis do the designers put on the actual finished product, the quality of the product, rather than just on the price? Um, it's, it's, it's a really interesting one because there's the, I, I think... I think having a visual specification, uh, as opposed to text, so yeah. pictures or built things, gives a very, very good idea of, of what, I mean, we were at a, a, a meeting yesterday, and there was lots of visualisation a part of the drawings, yeah. and that tells Rudy where he needs to be, yeah. you know, is it a five metre output a day, or is it a ten metre output a day, yeah. um, but understanding, understanding and, you know, uh, Understanding exactly what we what we're trying to build. Yeah. It's all about for us. It's about quality. Can we build it? Can we can we do the quality and can we make money? Yeah. You know, and I, I think this industry 
don't talk about the fact that about money. Yeah. It seems to be still like, mm, don't talk about money. Yeah, yeah. It's all a bit embarrassing. And actually, we need to make money. Yeah, the yeah. industry needs to make more money than it's making. Yeah. Okay. And just just go back onto the team. Then. How, how do you foster a, like a the level consultants team spirit? How do you get everyone bargaining to your the way that you want to run the business, the way that you want to drive it forward? We have, I mean, obviously, because of the COVID situation, it's all gone a little bit kind of remote. It's, yeah. it's, it's been difficult, for sure. Uh, our office has kind of been working from home. The three directors running the business. It, it's, it's been tough on all three of us, yeah. really, because we decided to, that you know, we, we only furloughed eight people, and we had a, a week or two of wobble. Shall we yeah. work, shall we not? Yeah. But we decided very, very quickly. Yeah. I think you interviewed me at... Uh, yeah when all Wizard. the others were in the pyjamas in the bedrooms and I was on site running it. And, 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 and I, I looked back and that was the right decision to yeah, do. Yeah. And we took that together. Yeah, we, yeah. we took that. And we had our own internal people saying, oh, I think we should shut up. Yeah, and we yeah. said, no, it just doesn't feel right to shut up. Yeah. So I think, I think we've communicated really well. We, there's a, we've got a partner, partnering bonus scheme for, for the whole of the company. Yeah. Um, we have foreman's meetings, which monthly, bi-monthly, but they're lapsed at the moment for yeah. obvious reasons. Um, we have office meetings yeah. and they've lapsed, but mm. they were what, once a month? Once yeah, every two months? Quarterly um, is the target um, to do them, uh, yeah. quarterly for, yeah. for the bigger ones. And, and then we get all the whole office in and we just talk about yeah. what's going on. Yeah. We have a, in, internal newsletters and things like that. We have parties, which you've been to yeah. a party in this <laughs> greenhouse, yeah. and we do things like that but yeah, we normally have a summer summer gathering summer for everybody gathering. and then a Christmas one. I think we should um, do more yeah yeah mm. there's there's the, the feeling that we should do more yeah. of it and on, on that kind of on the, the profit bonus, the bonus scheme mm. is it based on profit yeah what profit of the business over yes. a period of time yeah so basically there's a pot that pays out uh, yeah. and, and obviously but but the, we reserve the right to not pay it out yeah. the, the company and protecting the company and protecting those assets. Yeah. As I said, you know, Les, Les Mitchell was, was my mentor. Because I said, most landscapers, and I, I think people look to me as the kind of, because I'm not a QS, yeah. I'm not a, an accountant. A lot of people, a lot of businesses are run by people yeah. like that. I'm not, I'm a landscaper. I'm a hairy ass landscaper. But then, uh, then this guy sat on my shoulder and I still think, you know, what, what would Les think about this? Yeah. And I can hear him saying, yeah. Don't do it, Matt. Don't, don't even go there, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and so I think, you know, we, we, yeah, we, we don't do stupid things. We're not impulsive, really. Yeah. Um, we're quite, I'm quite risk averse now. I'm still kind of up for the challenge, yeah. but we really, you know, looking at the risks of the business. Yeah, yeah. Do we really want this job? Do we really want this ban access okay. on clear? In, you know, on a slope, or is it, is it we realistic? We walked away from a two million pound project just so, four weeks ago. Yeah. Um, um, yes. Just because it was uh, it's just the, wrong. The, the, the timings of getting it built wasn't right for we us. We just right. knew we were going to get beat up on this job, and they were de de you know, begging us to take this two million pound scheme. Mm. And we came back and we talked about it, and it's it is a team's decision. Yeah, yeah. And it just didn't feel right. So walked away. It's a good bit of position to have to do. It. Well, just um, you mentioned about COVID, and again with this latest lockdown, yeah. that you carry on. Yes, absolutely. You know, absolutely. I mean, the problem is, I think, for a lot of people, the message is really unclear. Yeah. You know, stay at home, safe lives. But actually, if you can work, then go to work. Yeah. And it was all very confusing. And yeah. I understand why people did. But I think companies who shut themselves down in, in our sector, I just think, I think they overreacted. Yeah. My view on that. Our health and safety manager has been working really hard to get, uh, keep, keep people safe and have all the protocols in place and all that. Um, yeah. On site, so we have you know, separate toilets and washing yeah. facilities and all that. Well, separate yeah. tools. Yeah. And, and people who are in the houses are happy for you to... Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yeah, obviously with their blessings. So. Yeah. yeah. And on the commercial side, is that affected at all? Any well, uh, we, we closed one site down because yeah. we deemed we, it wasn't safe for us. It was a right. central London scheme yeah. uh, run by a Turkish contracting company and, and it was just chaotic. And so we said, no, we're, we're not, we're not going to do this. So we just decided not to go back. So I think actually we, we were proactive, I think. Well, since we went back and we finished it. We went back and finished project, it, yeah. yeah but yeah. during the COVID period. But during the COVID period, no, exactly, yeah. We did, we did go back and finish it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when it felt safe to do so. Yeah. So yeah. I'm not, I'm, I don't think we or any of us are arrogant about it. Yeah. 
for you know, it, it felt wrong to take the co the, the furlough money yeah. when we're basically an outside industry that could go at Safeway. Yeah. Yeah, even like this today, we're not in our boardroom because yeah. wh wh why bring you into our, yeah, yeah. we don't need to do that. Yeah. So we're always thinking, you know, but driving the business forward is definitely the right thing we did through COVID. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So I've got a couple more questions yeah. as, as time's running out. The, the first one is based around, you said you're 60. Yeah. Uh, what, what's your ambitions for Landform and also what, what are you, your two ambitions for yourself at Landform and where you want Landform to go over the next period of well, I suppose I've got one eye on the exit, for sure I have, and uh, we've spoke about this. Um, um, I think, you know, I am conditioning the business, or we're conditioning the business to be sold yeah. at some point. Yeah. And that's, a, that's pretty public knowledge. Yeah. Um, I need to get my cash out of the business. Yeah. Uh, these lads will get the cash out of the business too. Um, there's no rush. I've got no... I love doing what I do. Yeah, yeah. So, you know... Would anybody take me on? I, I probably don't know, really. But work for anyone, would you? Huh? Work for I would actually. No, I would. I would. I would. <coughs> and I think you know, would I sell this business? Yes, I would sell the business. Yeah, yeah it would have to be the right people, and these guys would have to be feel comfortable about it. Yeah. And um, but yeah, that's for another day. But I, I've got no plans to retire. Yeah. You know, when I'm seventy, maybe, and just kind of, I've still got a few shelters in me, and I just, I, I love, I love the industry. Yeah, I, yeah. I love doing what I do. So. But, um, just keep going. What, what about you, Lynn? That, that's it, is it? Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, would, so just, if, Mark, if Mark sold his bit, would you work somebody else? I'm just you? a few years behind Mark, only really yeah. a few. Yeah, so but a lot, yeah, a lot but, behind um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I just love what I do. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, actually, out of the three of us, I think I've got the best job. What, out <laughs> because out? out of the three of us, I go around every day, yeah. I'm out on site, seeing the lads, seeing yeah. client designers. I'm watching those gardens grow, yeah, yeah. you know, and uh, yeah, it's just, it's, it's fantastic. It's got the hard, one of the hardest well, jobs. Do you think they enjoy it now that you're going to set up at site, or do you think they put a bit of trepidation down the price <laughs> no, max? No, 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 it's, you know, up. buying a breakfast every Friday, I think it helps. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, they, you know, we get on, we get on really well with yeah, the lads, yeah. and um, it's, it's, it's mutual respect, and yeah. it's, 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 it's making that work, really. Yeah. And, you know, building, building um, professional gardens. Yeah. And really then, so you're, you're the youngest of the three, <laughs> I guess. And yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, for me, it's uh, in the short term, it's, it's trying to make landform the slickest we can. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, we, we're is. working really hard on, on, yeah. on our uh, systems. immediate systems. Uh, we want to get design to do more. We want to get maintenance to do more. Yeah, we want to yeah. get ISO soon. Um, so it's, it's all about getting the business to be more... Um, hmm. Professional yeah. and, and so, so, so on, on reading into that, and you do think there's still an opportunity for growth. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. we still got yeah. we still got lots yeah. to learn. Lots yeah. to yeah. do. Massive. I mean, so on the design side, we're doing a lot more international design yeah. work. Yeah. Yeah. So say geographically. So are you still quite London, South East place? Yeah, uh, we 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 we, 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 we turn a lot of work away yeah. that people say, "Can you build a beautiful job at the north of England?" And yeah. you know. I like to go home and sleep on my bed and Matt's got young family and it's mm. it, the days of hammering up motorways are gone for us yeah. you know we've got enough chimney pots from central London up to Oxford out to Newbury down to the south coast yeah. if we can't make it slick there work there having said that we're sending a crew to Gibraltar next week right, okay. so <laughs> a follow on from your the yeah yeah so we've designed another we've got we've got three more schemes there yeah. uh, mm. parks public parks We've got another uh, park, and we've got uh, we're sending a crew of four out there for a month to, yeah. to landscape, which is a challenge. You know, I, you've got to think about them and the COVID and and, and them getting locked down, and yeah. so it's not it's not easy. But um, but yeah, I, th I think we're we're happy in our little pond in, in where we yeah. where we operate. Okay. You know, an hour and a half for, from this base takes us to some very interesting places yeah, very good. You know. and i guess the last thing and so if the rhs show gardens are get to go ahead for 2021 have you got some plans yeah yeah we have so the the two gardens that were shelved uh have been accepted to go forward uh, interestingly we've got no new inquiries for 21 yeah. normally we'd get four or five inquiries for chelsea bills we've got none but we've got the two bills so we're building for um uh, Amafi, the perfume brand, yeah. and uh, um, Bible, Bi Society. Bible Society right, okay. for and Sarah Ebley. Stunning gardens? Yeah, I mean, they're all stunning gardens. Lots of engineering? Uh, <laughs> I, yeah, 
I mean, absolutely. They're, they're stunning gardens. I mean, Sarah Ebley's got a kind of glass wall and a lot of rock and, and glass and, and water. <laughs> lots of things to go wrong with that yeah. one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, no, it's... Uh, but no, no canals in the middle of... Uh, no yeah. canal. Yeah. Or anything like yeah. that. Uh, everybody has to have the stupid moment, but, uh, <laughs> I, I, you know, that... that <laughs> That, I, I think that garden for me, that garden for me as a designer was to say about the art of a landscaper yeah. and actually to do something that people thought like how the, how the hell did that go together in 18 years? And I, looking at you now, honestly, I can't, I can't answer. I just <laughs> more look than judgment, I think. But uh, that was about as much as I'd ever want to do in 18 days. But there's that kind of burn to do that. Yeah. And part of me is still a little bit unhinged to say I can do that. I can, I can do that. So one of your first comments, and this is definitely the last thing, so we're, we're, we're about, uh, before we open up to questions from the audience, but one of your one of your earlier comments is that you used to do things because you wanted to prove you could do it. Yeah. Have you still got that inside you? A little bit. I'm a little crazy. Yeah. I'm a little... I'm a yeah. li I'm do you still <laughs> have to manage that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm, I, yeah I'm, I'm a bit of a kid at heart, to be yeah. honest. And, yeah. uh, but I, equally, I, I won't do something just willfully. Yeah. I don't want to fail at doing it yeah so adrenaline fueled a little bit and yeah. get the kick but these guys can pull me down and say, yeah. nah we ain't gonna do this yeah. and i would never force it so i, I would never pull rank uh, i wouldn't actually yeah. Yeah. but and we will take things on and we've never really failed at delivering a scheme yeah. and i think that the 2019 garden basically says it all yeah. if yeah. on paper would you do that yeah. would you do that in 18 days yeah. nah. Did the team enjoy building that? Uh, yeah, because I, because you know, I think we had a laugh actually. Yeah. It was tough. Yeah, yeah. It was tough, as opposed to the one before that, which was really quite simple. Yeah. The simplest garden ever built, and the, the 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 one that won Garden of the Decade. But the 19 garden was yeah, challenge was yeah tough. Yeah. Excellent. Well, thank you very much. Now we're going to take some questions from the audience. Thank you. Thanks. Morning, Mark, Rudy, I guess Matt's about to join us. Yes. Hello. <laughs> Firstly, thank you very much for hosting us in a great environment and lovely setting. Um, it did help having a nice open fire um, to keep us warm in there, but no, very, very, very good. Um, th there's quite a few questions that come in the email, so I'm just going to go through a couple of those first. Th th there's a couple about buying equipment, vehicles, um, done and how, how you do that in terms of, I think Mark might have said about managing cost base and making sure you keep your costs down. So in terms, in terms of your sort of big purchases, are, do you buy, do you lease or do you rent? How, how do you manage your sort of fleet, for instance? Uh, we, we buy, we buy uh, usually maybe on HP. So a lot of the construction equipment, we own most things actually. So we, we don't have any, uh, any business loans. Uh, we've got no overdraft in the company. Uh, we buy everything on either three or five years. All our vans, our trucks, everything uh, uh, is bought. And, it, and is there any um, plans to move, especially the vehicles, to electric? Yeah, absolutely. That, that's got to be a big driver. Rudy drives electric car. I don't. I'm a bit of a petrol head, so I'm kind of kicking and screaming, but that's my age. But certainly the London stuff, yeah. absolutely, when the vans and things become, you know, it's actually holding holding back a little bit because the technologies are, are moving so advanced. But no, we, we will be electric. Absolutely, we will. I'm not sure and about that. And there's another question in terms of sort of over the years of being in the business, have you seen, how, how, how do you feel about the products transforming and new products being available? And as a landscaper, is that, a, you know, is that a good thing? And, you know, have there been lots of products that you think, well, this is going to revolutionise our business and, you know, in terms of um, changing the way that you maybe do patios or how, how you do things? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, things like your, your, your future skate, the, the CPD, these events that you go and you look, you touch, you feel stuff. I think uh, a company that's, you know, it's evolving. This industry is evolving. We, as a company, need to be on top, reading, reading, and doing our research. I think what I would say is, 
over time slightly cautious about this miracle pointing stuff that that shaves time off. You know, we I, I'm I'm old enough to know that the, some of that stuff has failed. So I would say I'm slightly cautious, but receptive, very, very receptive to technology and to enhance, to, to embrace it. And, and have, have you seen like it, different periods of, of, of your career where new products have come onto the market and designers are using new type of equipment, et cetera, or, or is it continually being moving, moving, moving? Is there, or, or is there definitely picks and troughs and... No, I, I, th I think, you know, when I started landscaping just after the war, that's a joke, by the way. Um, but, but <laughs> Which one, Mark? <laughs> Which one? <laughs> so, so, certainly in the 80s, things moved very slowly. It seemed to me, I remember my first mobile phone and things like that, it was slowly. But now the curve of change is vast. It's absolutely massive. And, and our industry, our design, we're taking products from other industries. So for us as landscapers, it's getting harder because there's so many moving parts from different from different industries and worldwide travel. So for us, you know, we, we, we're building bespoke things every single day and we have to learn. And so when people say, I need a, I need a tender, I need a tender back. Um, can you hear me? Sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, when, when people say they want a tender back within a, a ridiculous time, then it, it, it doesn't work because we have to do the research to find out what, the, what, what that is, what that product is. And I think that's a lot of landscapers are getting caught because they haven't done the research. So I think back in the day, in the 80s, it was a lot easier because there was less, less moving parts, less, less technology, less materials. Now we're having to embrace that on a daily basis, which is great. It's great. I'll just move on to maybe Rudy, this one for you then in terms of, is do, does every job make a profit even including building a canal <laughs> most makes profit <laughs> most of them yeah almost all of them makes profit yes <laughs> that's the answer okay and uh, um I, I guess reading into that a little bit does some mark's imagination or his desire to do things sometimes stretch the um making the profit on the job So again, you can answer that with uh, <laughs> you can answer that, Rudy. No problem. <laughs> no. We'll we, we, we leave that. Another one I think is quite an interesting one here is: Do you choose, when 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 you're looking at design from outside of the company? Do you choose a design or do you choose a designer? So would you would you pitch based on who the designer is, or would you pitch on who based the design who's the design is? Who's that to me, Jim? Yeah, I, I guess. Uh, Whoever's making the decision on what you're okay, so, for. Okay, so I, I think obviously ge geographically to the business, um, timing of that design, have we got the resources? Are we full? Can we cope with it? Can we deliver that quality? I also think the personality. I think we have one way from designers that we just don't feel there's any synergy. There's any. There's got to be a, a mutual respect. There's got to be that feeling that we can work well together. And sometimes, not often, we just don't think possibly there is. And I think, you know, we, we do it in a very polite way. But I think, I think building this, the kind of stuff we do needs a full commitment from the client, from the designer and from us. And I think if there's fraction or tension there, it's best to walk away. Um, I think personalities uh, play a big part, a big factor in the success of a scheme. Well, what, what about designers' sort of experience if they're, just out of one of the colleges or you know they've been doing it for 10 years does it make a difference or it, sh it shouldn't do I, I mean you know we get a lot of young designers and we we, we are designer friendly I, I think we are definitely designer friendly we're not this ogre kind of contractor that we put these barriers up we embrace uh, people I, I, I taught I taught at college for many many years I think as long as designers come realistically and they're prepared to listen and question us um, and not take everything on face value, then we, I think we welcome working with fresh young people. We also like work. I, I don't think we make a, 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 di a, a difference about it. As long as everybody's realistic that what they're trying to do with the money and the budget they've got it is achievable, then, then we'll work together, no problem at all. And so there's, there's a question as well from um, about 
not not your own design at Chelsea, but when you're building for another design at Chelsea, it's a tendering process still in place. And how does that work with you? I, you know, I, that's that's an easy one. I don't tender for Chelsea. I mean, why why would I? I've, I've built a hundred gardens. It's thirty odd years. Come to us if you want us to build your garden. You know, I don't want to go on a tender for Chelsea. No, absolutely not. Because it's not about that. It's about you know, it's about this 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 incredibly hard journey that we're on together. Look, this is the design intention. These are the budgets. Can we make it work? And let let's get that thing across the line. But now, I think if 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 we were asked to tender, no matter who it was, I'd say no. Nah. I just it's not for us. It's about what we bring to it, and um, and most people would come and and talk to us. Would you want to be part of this journey? So tendering, no. It's just more of a pricing, is it? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's you know, we we don't put gun to people's head. They come in with a concept and Rude is involved and potentially Catherine is involved from the design side because she she wears this hat of helping the designers uh, give us the information to build that thing as I said building a Chelsea garden is a is a um, is a business lesson to how to do something correctly in 18 days world class and as I said it, it's not a happy accident that you can build a canal or, or anything that's really really complex uh, but it needs a lot, a lot. So Catherine helps the designers give the information. Rudy puts in all the costs to get that across the line. Uh, and then Matt runs the business when I, I go to Chelsea. And that's how it's always been. Because so our business has got, got to continue beyond Chelsea. It's not about Chelsea. Chelsea is a contract. We prepare for it. I tend to run it because that's what I do. And Matt runs the business while, while I... You can have quite a few jobs running at the same time. Yeah. You can't. Yeah. So do, do you not get involved in Chelsea then, Matt? Not really, no. I go, I go for the um, champagne. champagne at the end. <laughs> the best part. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> really, really, a question here then on the accounting systems and the software. Is it a bespoke mm. one? Is it, have you got it on an app or is it a off-the-shelf system that you're using? Uh, it's an off-the-shelf system. Um, the, the bespoke ones are far too expensive. So uh, we, it's, the, it's the best off-the-shelf we could find. And it was based on um, something that integrates with Sage, um, that our accountants are um, married to Sage. So anything that works with Sage, is, that's what we've gone for. And, and all the projects costings is all put into into Sage and worked out from Sage. Well, it's not. Uh, it's in. It's it's uh, it's a software called Evaluate. It, it works with Sage. Um, so we yeah we, we work. Everything goes in there, um, and then from there it goes to Sage. And another question, I guess, back to Mark, really, in terms of the, the sort of development of the sector. What's the next big challenges? What's the next big changes? What's the next trends that you see coming? Yeah, that's, a, that's a question and a half, that one. I, I think... You can thank, I, you can thank I, Ramon I, I, for that. Huh? You can thank Ramon for that. Yeah. I, I just think, okay, I think there's a massive amount of opportunities in our sector. I think landscaping, through this horrible COVID situation, we've seen horticulture and landscaping become really paramount for people's well-being and the importance. And I think there's some fantastic opportunities to get. I think, you know, as an industry, we need to, I think, set our stall out a bit more professionally. Uh, I think we need to possibly be making more money than we are doing as a, as a, as a whole. I think there. I think people are being more conditioned to spend money on landscape. There's a, there's an education process, but I don't think. I think you know. I mean, this COVID thing has been absolutely horrendous to a lot of people. But I mean, speaking of being kind of quite selfish about it for our business, you know, we've now learned that our business can operate remotely. Our accounts can operate, and and all our systems work. So that's been a, a game changer for us. Um, I also think that it's, it's put our sector on, on a, we have never been as busy. We have never had the amount of really, really good inquiries. Uh, and we've got Brexit looming. I think Brexit potentially is the bigger issue uh, for us and how that's going to knock on to costs for imports. But I, I think, um, I, I think, you know, for the quality players and, and, I, and for us, it's about accreditation for these larger projects. You know, I see that 
accreditation will wipe out a lot of the competition. You know, unless you've got all these things in line, then so for us to, to step up to that le that next level to get the to get the business running very very slick. So it's a systems complete system driven business, backed up with a lot of technical ability. And do you think the gar the gardens you will be you will be building in the future will be different than the gardens you're building now? Yeah, I think so. I think climate change, environmental. I think there's a lot of environmental pressures on you know why dig out these gardens when you can we can work with what you will. So waste removal will become prohibitive, I believe. Uh, I think um, obviously recycled and upcycled materials. I think will be become um, more things like irrigation and temporary irrigation systems. The, the use of water, I think, will become, and, and I think is a big issue, and I think it will become a, a bigger issue. But I, I think I think also technologies, you know, from we've seen it with lighting and music and audio systems and all that stuff, uh, outdoor entertaining as temperatures warm up. I think that's that brings uh, the people's ability to spend money on on landscape. I mean, people haven't travelled this year, so people are saying stay at home vacations, let's get the outdoor kitchen done, let's get that done sorted out. If this happens again, we want to be ready for it. I think there's, I think our interest is set for some fantastic opportunities for the guys that are prepared. I, that, and, and I know, because I'm not sure, maybe, maybe Matt, so a million pound you said on maintenance. Do you think there's an opportunity to grow that, develop that, and is it something you would look at? Absolutely. <laughs> Definitely, it's something which we're which we're looking at daily on um, on the growing business is um, on the design and the on the maintenance as well as consultants. But maintenance is very important. As Mark said earlier, you know, maintenance is is we we, we want to build a garden and make sure it's in good hands at the end, and looked after. So, so at at the moment, is there like a year's contract in terms of you doing the maintenance, or is it? We like to try to, to say to clients, yeah, we, let's let, let us do a year's maintenance and see how we get on and take it from there really yeah because I, I guess one of the other things now as well then is like it must as as the market grows and, and the opportunity grows the maintenance side of it must grow as well because of the fact that if more people are going to spend money on having gardens designed and they're going to they're, the likelihood is they're going to want them to be looked after yeah. and one thing i picked up from uh, one of the seminars yesterday is about at that very very top level um in the commercial market that's building the big projects a shortage of companies that can fulfill some of the construction side of it do you think do you, do you feel that in where you are now or do you still think it's quite a competitive one and maybe in the, do, in the domestic market I, I think it is i think i think for for us uh, where where our strengths are are the very very technical pieces of work the larger um tenders i mean interesting uh, i was listening to rick uh, and the willoughby's which i found fascinating actually i thought it was a, a really great uh, interview yesterday but what he said, he, 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 they, you know, they're not frightened to take risk. And I don't think we are. I mean, we won't take financial risk, but these risks on, on these complicated pieces of work will basically put us into a very, very small pool of competition. And that's what we want to be. So, you know, um, I think Willoughby's have got in a very fantastic position where a lot of their work is negotiated. And we're seeing more of that. I mean, obviously, the Chelsea stuff, for instance, is negotiated, and, and but we're we're in a very small market of maybe one or two uh, landscapers. If, if if we got a tender in to say uh, they're going out to six people or five people or even possibly four people, no, that's that's a risk I'm not prepared to take. So we're we're moving to be a little bit more not elite. I don't think that would be the wrong way to say, but a little bit more. Uh, choosy on on wh where we go, where our market is, and where we can, you know, a deliver quality but make money. Yeah, I'm, I'm conscious of time because unfortunately the actual system that we're on does kick us out at half past ten, so or maybe give us a couple extra minutes. Um, so, do, uh, no, I can just go a bit more because I think you you get a wider view to what's happening in the market. Do you see lots of new companies coming up that will challenge you over the period of time, or do you think there's a there is still a golf maybe in, in the sort of top level to, to, to the medium or you said tier one, tier two, three contractors. Or do you see that there's a growing um, a growing landscape in the community behind you that will be competing for your, for your jobs? 
Um, yes, I, I think there's some really, really sharp little operations coming up. I, I say little, I don't mean that in a patronising way, but guys that are really, really focused, their marketing, their professionalism, you know, challenged, come on, you know, bring it on. It, it's great for the industry. It's great. It's great. We want to see a lot more companies, as Willoughby said yesterday. You know, we're not navel gazing or looking over our shoulder. We need to find out who we're up against. Because again, you know, domestic landscapes, sometimes we can be up against, you know, Bill and Ben landscapes. And we, I'm just wasting my time and Rudy's time and everybody's time. So to find out who, who we're up against is not, not to try anything other than, is this the right job for us? Have, have, they, have they set about this? And for us, possibly the more complicated jobs are our kind of where, we, where we're comfortable on. You know, the box standard landscapes are not for us. We're just not, yeah. we're not that's not what we do. Excellent. There's just one, one final question. I think it, it's for Matt. And I don't know if it's come from Louise or not, but it's like, Matt, what's it like to be married to Mark for 33 years? <laughs> <laughs> I could have been inside with clean three people, couldn't I? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Right. We're like, we're like brothers, really, to be honest. Excellent. Yeah. Good. I, I really appreciate your time, not just today, but also for hosting us the video. It's been fantastic. And it's really, really good for our industry to see inside your business, as you are one of the leading lights. And thank you again very much. Thank, thank you for, the thank you for listening. Thank you. thank you very much. Bye. 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 Bye.